This video was designed to talk you through the water cycle and how it relates to the GCSE geography course, uh, including the definitions and likely questions that you may well come across. I'm going to deal with the water cycle using this diagram that we have on the screen and we're going to talk about it in three main stages. The first stage is how the water gets from the ocean uh, to precipitation. Uh, you may be aware of this process through studying the water cycle and other subjects and your key stage three geography. Basically the water evaporates, uh, rises, cools and condenses to form clouds and turns into precipitation. Precipitation is any method by which the water makes its way back to the earth's surface and that could be rain, hail, sleet or snow. As the water reaches the earth's surface, the next stage is called surface uh, flows. So obviously at this stage, uh, the precipitation, and then this example is rain, <coughs> excuse me, um, falls onto the earth's surface, makes its way over the earth's surface back to the sea, and that's referred to as surface runoff. So any method whereby water makes its way over the land surface, either directly back to the sea or into a river and then eventually to the sea, is called surface runoff. Before that precipitation makes its way to the surface, it could be intercepted or caught by vegetation. So this process of interception occurs when uh, vegetation, for example trees, leaves, catch the precipitation and then uh, the precipitation is either held in the vegetation or makes its way back to the surface and then a surface runoff makes its way back to the river or the sea. The next stage of the process moves from the surface to the subsurface um, and these are referred to as subsurface flows. The first thing that needs to happen here is infiltration and infiltration is basically the process whereby precipitation moves from the surface into the soil layer and this green layer represents the soil layer. At this stage the water could be stored here um, as soil moisture so that would be basically moisture uh, in the soil. The water can also uh, be transferred laterally as through flow. So through flow is any uh, method by which moisture moves through the soil layer back to the surface and then into a river or back to the sea. The other thing that the precipitation can now do is move from this soil layer down into the rock layer and the process that it does that by is called percolation. Moving from the soil layer down into the rock layer. This is sometimes uh, referred to as groundwater and we also have another arrow here um, which shows that groundwater flow is the movement of water in the rock layer. So percolation moves it in, it's stored as groundwater and groundwater flow is the lateral movement. So that's the overview uh, of um, the water cycle. One of the other things that you'll have to do in your exam is possibly demonstrate understanding of this uh, process as a system. Uh, the idea that it has inputs, stores, transfers and outputs. Obviously precipitation is the input into the water cycle and the output is the movement of water back into the sea, so the discharge uh, of the river at the mouth. Um, some examples uh, of stores would be soil moisture, so water stored in the soil, groundwater, water stored in the rocks, or uh, surface storage, which is water just stored on the surface, for example, puddles. Some transfers would be infiltration, so the movement of water from the surface down into the soil layer, percolation from the soil layer to the ground, um, and those are examples of each of the, the four stages. Here's some of the definitions that I've just talked you through. So again, you can pause the video, have a look at these definitions, take some notes down, set yourself a short self-test. Once you've done that, you can then move on and have a look at some of the likely questions that come up in relation to this. So first of all, name two stores of water within the drainage basin. So if you think about the answer I've just talked you through, we could talk about soil moisture, we could talk about groundwater, um, or we could talk about surface storage. Other examples are available, um, but those are just some that we could think about. Here's another likely question. So again, you can see here that we've got figure two, which is a diagram, quite similar to the diagram I've just showed you. Um, and the question is asking you to complete table one, which is this table, using uh, the answers from the list below. 
So uh, once again, you could pause the video at this stage, sketch out that diagram and then have a go at filling in the table yourself. Uh, I'm going to talk you through the answers now. So obviously, um, at stage one, up here where the uh, tr vegetation, in this case trees, are catching the water, that is obviously uh, interception. So in number one here, I would write interception. If I was doing this for real in the exam, I would also take my pen and I would X out um, interception. Number two uh, is quite clearly surface runoff. So this blue arrow um, represents water, which is making its way back to uh, the sea uh, above the surface. So again, surface runoff would be written into slot number two. Um, and in the exam, I would just X that out to make sure I don't get conf confused. Number three is percolation. The answer's already been given there for you. So you can see here that the, this sort of greeny colour is the soil layer and this uh, is obviously the rock layer. So th this arrow represents percolation. Water moving from the soil layer into the rock layer. Number four um, is represented by this arrow. So this is water which is in the soil layer and it's moving in the soil layer. So that obviously um, is through flow. So once again, uh, if I was doing this in an exam, put a, a line through that like so. Number five is this arrow. So we're in the rock layer and we're moving the water. So that's obviously groundwater flow. And I would come down and I would select groundwater flow from the list and write it in as number five. Discharge in the watershed are not used for this answer. So quite a straightforward diagram. And you can see hopefully that our notes uh, match this. Again, another type of question that you might get is a simple definition question. So state the meaning of the term percolation. We've talked about that quite a bit already. So the idea that this is the movement of water from the soil layer into the rock layer, two marks. You also may get a um, slightly more difficult question. Um, this question uh, uses explain as a command word how heavy rainfall and wet ground might affect the discharge of a river. So obviously um, because this is an explain question and it's worth three marks, I would expect you guys to be using our point, explain, expand structure. Uh, and then uh, I would think that you would put your answer together. So thinking about how rainfall falls on wet ground. So the idea that um, because the ground is already wet, that reduces the rate of infiltration. Basically the soil is full of water, so any fresh precipitation can't make its way into the soil. Um, if it's not making its way into the soil, that must therefore increase the rate of surface runoff, either directly into the sea or into a river and then eventually into the sea. But in this case, the question is asking about the river. So the final point is that it would increase the discharge of the river. Okay, thank you.